In this screencast, we're going to talk a little bit about the data structures that Redis gives us. You know that relational databases like MySQL have tables for holding their records, and you know that document databases like MongoDB have collections for holding their documents, but Redis doesn't really have any big structure type like that. Instead, everything in Redis is just keys and values. Now, there are five different data structures that we can use in Redis. There's the string, or the scalar value, the list, the hash, the set, and the sorted set. And all of these are just a value that is set on a single key. So here I've got a Redis command line, and we can set a string by doing set, name, and then we put the string. So for example, Redis Essentials. And I hit enter, and of course we've just saved this. Now, name here is the name of our key. We've chosen to call the key name. So let's talk for a second about how keys work. Now, your key is always going to be a string, and pretty much any string will do. We can have everything from a blank string to the entire string of data that you might find inside of a JPEG file. Anything like this is going to work. Now, it probably shouldn't be too short, because that might make it easy to confuse strings, but you don't want it to be too long either, because the length of the key will affect memory usage and the key lookup time for running queries and that type of thing. So you want to have something moderate. A lot of people will often namespace their keys. So for example, we might have something like set user colon one to uh, Joe Smith, and then we can set user colon two to Jane Doe, just like that. And so as you can see, we've kind of namespaced them by doing user colon one. A couple of things here. First of all, notice that this is still just a regular string key. Like I said, all keys will always be strings. And what you see here is these are both just regular strings. The namespacing like this is purely for your own convenience and organization. For example, we aren't creating a user table here and giving it a first record with an ID of one or anything like that. These are just strings. However, you will see later that naming your keys in this way can be handy in a few of the more complex situations. Now in the cases of these three key value pairs we've just set, I think it's obvious that the string that we've used afterward here is the actual data in our key value pair. That's the value. Now, no matter which of the five data structures we're using, the data that we put into Redis is always treated as a byte array. And it always has to be less than or equal to 512 megabytes. And if you ever need to store more than 512 megabytes of data in a single key value pair, I think you might want to use something other than Redis. However, just know that it's always going to be a byte array like this. We don't have data types in the same way we do in, for example, a SQL database, where we can choose whether this is going to be a float or an integer or, you know, some different length of a varying character string or a text field, anything like that. It's always considered to be a byte array, so basically just a string of some number of characters. Basically, it's always a string. Now, you will see as we go through some of the different commands that we can use that Redis does know how to treat some of these as numbers and we can use both integers and floating point values. However, when you store them, it will be the same as storing a regular string. So this lays down some of the ground rules for using keys and values. And so now that we have a little bit of an idea of how these things work, we can start looking at storing and working with these values in the next screencast.